Good afternoon, folks. Good morning. I don't know what time you're watching this, but hello. How are you? What's up, everybody? Peter McKinnon here. Welcome back to another, I guess this is kind of like a vlog. We're testing cameras out today. I want to see how trained your eye is. I want to see how good it is. We're going to gamify this to see if you can tell which camera is being used for which scene. And well, I'll explain more upstairs. It'll make sense in a second. You see, the Canon RP got a firmware update in October of 2019. Now in that firmware update, Canon added the use of 24 frames per second, 24p, to the recording modes. Psyched. Now why is this exciting, the addition of 24p to this camera? Well, it's full frame, it shoots 24p, full HD, it shoots 60p, full HD, and it's $899. That's a really good, how do I, yeah, how do, I do this? That's a really good price point for a camera that offers all of those things. Oh. So you might be thinking, Pete, like, why do I, why does that matter? Well, now you've got a full frame camera, mirrorless camera that shoots 24p and 60p in full HD and it's sub $1,000. That's good value. But good value means nothing if the camera is not good, if it doesn't perform. So today, we're gonna see if this camera performs. Can you vlog on it? Can you shoot B-roll on it? Is it something that you could take around with you with confidence? Does it stand up to the EOS R? Does it stand up to a cinema camera? Is this camera worth investing in? Is it a good backup? Or is it something you just need to skip entirely? That's what we're going over today. Oh, and by the way, as a vlog camera, this looks good. You're looking at the RP right now. I've been vlogging on it all morning. You saw that, you've seen the clips. It does the job just fine. And I'm using a Rode Video Micro, so not even an expensive shotgun mic, almost under $1,000. Okay, I've set up an Aperture 300D over top of this island here, and uh, I'm gonna pull some shots in this espresso machine. I'm gonna make two kind of just loose sequences, some shots from this camera, the RP, and a few shots from the EOS R. Uh, and then you are gonna see if you can tell which shots are from which camera. Now I'm gonna shoot not in log because the RP doesn't do log, and I'll be using the same lens on each camera and the same settings to make it as fair as I can. I'll probably shoot these in 60p because they both do full HD 60p, so that's what I'll be doing settings wise. And then uh, it's time to make and drink some coffee, which I am never, never mad about. Okay. Did that sound Canadian? I'm never mad about a boot. <laughs> Okay, uh, first things first, no, that coffee was not wasted. Uh, second, buzzing just a tad. Third, that looked pretty good, right? How many did you get right? Be honest, comment below, how many did you get right? Which ones did you get wrong? I'd love to scroll through and see uh, how many of you had the eye to spot the USR over the RP. But they both looked pretty good. So when you're comparing a camera that's much like double the price plus to a camera that's 899, you start to think to yourself like, well, what is it that I need? What is it that I need as an artist and would this camera perform for me and save me the money so that I can invest it into something else like a lens or a mic, etc. So let's take a look at the stats. Let's get onto the main angle in one, two, three. Okay, much better. Now we've got a proper setup to talk about these cameras and discuss the intricacies of 
the EOS RP. So let's talk about the photography side of things when it comes to this camera and the sensors. So with the EOS RP, you've got a 30.3 megapixel sensor. So photography is your jam. This is gonna win in the megapixel department, but we all know it's not always all about how many megapixels a sensor has, but it's got more. Then you've got the RP that has 26.2 megapixels. So it's, it's barely behind at all. So for me, that's kind of like a moot point. I love saying that, moot point. <laughs> moot, you can't say it with like a straight face, moot point. <laughs> I guess you can. Let's talk about burst speeds when you're shooting fast. With the EOS R, you've got eight frames per second or five frames per second with continuous shooting. The EOS R, you've got five frames per second or four frames per second with continuous shooting. So it is slower. It's a slower camera when it comes to burst mode. So if those are the types of things that you need in a camera when you're shooting photography, if it's sports mainly, or you're trying to capture wildlife as a bird flies off a branch somewhere, that continuous shooting speed that the EOS R has over the RP, that might be something of value to you. And that's why it always comes back to what do you need? I don't think, necessarily there's any bad camera these days. Cameras are great. It's 2020. Most cameras that are out there are awesome. It's just, does it have the features that are awesome for you? And those things might not be awesome for me, but they're awesome for you. It kind of comes down to like, what can you afford? What's the price? And what are you getting for that price? And how does it work for you as a photographer, cinematographer, what have you? It's why it's such a hard question when people say, what camera should I buy? I'm like, I don't know anything about you. I can't give you that option. I can give you like the, the five, you know, off the cuff answers, but those aren't tailored to your specific needs that would really dial in to bring you value. It's a hard one. Let's continue. Uh, none of these bodies have in-body image stabilization, but they obviously have stabilization depending on what lens you put on them. So if you buy an RF lens with stabilization, then you're obviously gonna get that in lens. Let's talk video mode for a second. EOS R, full frame, 4K 30, it is cropped. You've got 1080p at 60 frames per second. EOS RP, you've got 4K 24, it is cropped. You've got 1080p, full HD 24, that's great. That's with the newest firmware update that we talked about at the beginning of this video. It's also gonna do 1080p at 60. Both single SD card slots, the EOS R takes that LPE6 battery that we all have tons of, whereas the RP takes this, what is this? This is the one bummer for me, because this is the only battery I have. I only have one of these. LPE17. So SD card goes in the bottom, uh, SD card on the R goes in the side. I do like the battery better on the EOS R and I do like where the memory card slot is better. You're losing the screen up top. So the EOS R has that on the RP, you're not getting, let me take this mic off. This is it's just getting in the way, just bouncing around. Come on, man. So EOS RP, EOS R. So you are losing that top screen with this camera. And that's handy. That's handy for on the fly shooting at night. It lights up, it's helpful. All your settings are right there. That's all obviously moving to the back of the screen. But anytime I can be looking at the screen less for me is a good thing. It's not a deal breaker. Obviously you pay more, you're gonna get more features out of a camera, hopefully. Uh, so it's not like, it's not the end of the world, but I do, I like it. And I found myself missing it when shooting with this camera. Okay, currently right now on BH Photo, the EOS RP is $899. The EOS R body currently right now on BH Photo is $1799. So, I mean, I'll leave that to you. Is it worth it to you? So this video, this video isn't specifically to tell you one's better than the other. It, they're different cameras. They're different cameras for different types of photographers. The RP is an entry level camera. It's for someone that's looking to get into this. It's looking to get into a mirrorless camera to figure out this craft. Is, do I like this? Is this camera good? And eventually upgrade to the other models above that. That's what the RP is for. We're not trying to come in here and say the RP does all. Obviously it's got limitations, but I think if anything, this video shows that the RP is quite in fact capable. Even for the stuff that I'm doing, Doing day to day, the RP does the job. It's got time lapse mode, it's got digital image stabilization, so it is it is still feature packed. So for someone on a budget looking to get into a mirrorless camera to take advantage of the RF glass or use the Canon glass you might already have from your older DSLR, the RP is a great addition. It does lack in specs and it does lack in overall beefiness compared to something like the EOS R that can shoot log and do more, but it's not a write off. It's not a complete write-off. And that firmware update that they put out in October definitely helped with that. Okay guys, that's it for me. It's the middle of summer. It's June, I don't even know, but it's 30 degrees outside. I'm still wearing a hoodie and I'm starting to sweat. I gotta take this off, grab a fizzy water and get on with things. Thanks so much for watching. Hit the like button, subscribe if you aren't already. And, and I will see you in the next video. Keep doing this. What's up?
Did you eat all the ice cream cake? Uh, 